guys, hi! Chat, it's that time again for Diablo 3 PTR News Season 27, Patch 274, guys. Patch notes! Literally just popped up. Let's delve in to what's inside Season 27. Okay, guys, when can we play the PTR? So we're basically the test server. Our 16-day PTR testing period for 274 update begins on the July the 12th, guys. So just around the corner. That's a Tuesday, I believe. Yep, there it is, guys. So uh, just, just around the corner, Tuesday there. Blah, 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 blah. Let's just get straight to the meat, meat and bones, man. I'll put the link, guys, to these patch notes, as usual, in the description of this video. Season 27. Okay, guys, so what's new for Season 27? Season 27 introduces a new type of consumable called the Angelic Crucibles. Oh, new consumable, guys. Uh, once covered by the Nephilim, these heavenly artifacts can be used to sanctify any equipable, le equipable legendary item. Sanctifying an item reforges it to have perfect ancient level stats on all fixes while also preserving the item's legendary power. Whoa, so basically you can make a primal. Basically, that's what that is. In addition, this process adds one of the three new powers unique to each class. Oh, that's interesting. Seasonal theme details. Angelic crucibles and sanctified items can only be acquired in seasonal play. And will not transfer to your non-seasonal character when the season ends, as usual. Angelic crucibles can drop anywhere in Sanctuary at level 70. So basically Revs, GRs, uh, Echoing Nightmare, etc, etc. Players can obtain as many as sanctified items as they like. However, only one sanctified item can be equipped at any time. Okay, so you can only equip one, guys. Just on one. Sanctified items can be sanctified again using another Angelic Crucible. So basically, if you don't get the power that you want, you can just re-roll it. Cool. No stats are preserved when sanctifying an item. Only level 70 equipable items can be sanctified. Crafted items cannot be sanctified. Followers cannot equip sanctified items either. Okay, guys, so here we go. Class specific sanctified powers. So once we've got one of these sanctified powers on the Barbarian, this is what it can do. Whirlwind pulls in and holds all enemies within 25 yards. That'd be quite nice, guys, for a support Barbarian. Cool. Hammer the Agents hits in all directions around the Barbarian. That could be fun. Every seventh cast of the Hammer of the Agents unleashes a powerful shockwave. Ooh, I wonder how much damage it does. Sounds pretty cool. Uh, hitting enemies and generate stacks of Tempest Rhythm. Hmm. Activating the Wrath of the Berserker consumes 50 stacks of Tempest Rhythm and startles enemies within 16 yards, causing them to take 0.5% increased damage per stack for 10 seconds, maximum of 100 stacks. Wow, that sounds really cool. That sounds actually really, really cool. Guys, what do you think of the free powers here for the Barbarian? Comments below, please. Nice. Um, this, guys, is a good old Crusader, man. Bless Hammer now crackles with energy, damaging enemies within 15 yards of its path. All runes but Dominion now throw the hammer in a direct path in front of the Crusader. Interesting. Uh, every two seconds, call down Fists of the Heavens on a random nearby enemy. That's pretty powerful. That's pretty nice, man. Just automatic Fists of the Heavens. Holy hell. Uh, after casting Falling Sword, oh, I love that skill, you descend from the sky with two Archangels. That wield immense holy skills and benefit you, benefit from your holy damage skill modifiers. That sounds really cool. <laughs> you can space yourself on a couple of pets, guys. That wield immense holy skills. Holy shit, that sounds fun. Nice. Demon Hunter Strafe now casts the last non channeled hatred spender, spending ability casted. Really? Oh my god. <laughs> One half they can cast it though. That sounds really crazy. Casting Vengeance unleashes a barrage of rockets that deal damage equal to a percentage of the enemy's current hit points. Whoa! The percentage per rocket is reduced if the enemy is an elite or boss. This effect cannot occur more than once in every 60 seconds. Okay. Sounds like crushing blow. <laughs> sounds like crushing blow. It can happen once every 60 seconds. Okay. Sounds interesting. Firing a cluster arrow concentrates its explosive force into a piercing ray of light. Bloody hell, guys. Can't wait for this PTR to start and see all these new effects and stuff. Sounds pretty cool. Uh, Monk, guys. Casting Wave of Light now summons a bell at its target location that deals damage when the caster attacks the bell. Up to seven bells can be active at a time. Really? At one time? Really? That sounds pretty cool. It's a bit different mechanic. Summon a bell that you can hit and uh, damage enemies around it. 
That sounds pretty interesting. Uh, all, all of the way of the 100 fist combo punches use the second stage combo punch. Really? Oh my god. The target of your seven side strike is barraged with spiritual punches for 15 seconds. This is going to only affect one enemy at a time. Spiritual punches for 15 seconds. A barrage of lots of punches. Sounds interesting. Hmm. Could we give a single time? Maybe RGK? Necromancer. Ooh, what does Necromancer power get? Your golem now picks up corpses within 20 yards. Each corpse it stores allows you to cast any corpse spending ability with a maximum number of corpses consumed per cast. Up to 30 corpses can be stored. It's a pretty interesting mechanic, guys. What do you think about that one? That's pretty cool. Uh, enemies within 50 yards are constantly assaulted by army of the uh, of the uh, dead. Unconventional warfare with this item is equipped. Ooh. Sounds pretty cool. Uh, hitting enemies with Death Nova five consecutive times adds a spirit that afflicts an enemy with, with every fifth cast of the Death Nova. Up to three spirits can be sent at a time. Spirits from Death Nova? Mm -hmm. Sounds a bit juicy, guys. Like, I can't wait to test this out. Right, guys. Witch Doctor. Here we go. Please be good. Right, guys, five seconds after casting Haunt, all haunted enemies within 50 yards are pulled to the Witch Starter. That's actually pretty cool. And that would make for a very, very good support Witch Starter. Maybe in four minutes, a pull trash into one spot. That would be really good. Problem is, though, we don't really use Haunt anymore in the Witch Starter. Because we use Ring of Emptiness, we just use Pestilence these days. You know, So for a solo Witch Starter, might not be that good. I really hope Blizzard changes this from Haunt Hopefully to Locust Swamp Pestilence instead. Because um, casting Haunt is a very laborious thing. It's like Haunt, Haunt, Haunt. It takes ages. So um, it, it'd probably be fine for like, you know, like I said, you know, like support Witch Doctor. That'd be great. But for Solo Witch Doctor, using Haunt on the Baragon is horrible. You know, especially when we used to use pest, uh, Locust Swamp Pestilence. So Blitz, if you guys are watching, definitely consider Locust Swamp Pestilence over Haunt for this particular thing here. Especially for Solo play. But as I said, you know, for... Um, for group play, that should be too bad. You know, if you're playing support doctor. Ugh, support witch doctor. Right, guys. Horrify becomes an aura that causes enemies to receive 15% more damage and deal 15% less damage in addition to its other effects. Again, this was like another support witch doctor thing. You know? So this and this. I do. Does Blizzard want us to play witch doctor as a support this season? Because so far, that's what I'm kind of feeling. Obviously, you know, this could be useful in solo play because a lot of the witch doctor builds actually use... Yeah, you know, horrify. Frightening aspect most of the time for push. So this will be good for, for solo push, you know, but right now it feels like we're trying to be a bit of a support wish not here. Your gargantuan spreads local swarm to any enemy within 16 yards. And summons zombie dogs paradoxically. Zombie dogs now gain every rune when summoned. Okay, so basically what we can do here is a little bit of um zero dogs, like we used to do in the old days, guys. Remember zero dogs? My first ever video. <laughs> so yeah, guys, zero dogs, man. Where you explode the dogs could possibly come back with this. Problem is though, if your gargantry is spreading locust swarm constantly, it's going to cause an enormous amount of lag on the server, especially in four players. So uh, that would need to change. The locust swarm skill needs to change to something else, in my opinion, because it will lag out the whole group immediately. <laughs> yeah, spamming locust swarm is not a good idea. Unless they fix the servers, of course. Yeah, not too bad, guys. You know, not too bad. But not, like I said, with this haunt here, I'd like to see that change the pest thing. Horrified Aura. I think that's really cool, actually. I really like that. Gargantian Bed, Spreading Locust Swarm. Not too sure about that. But um, having uh, possible Zero Dogs coming back again, that could be good. It probably needs a big damage buff to make it work, though. But yeah, interesting. Not too bad. Okay, guys. For, for Wizard, casting Storm Armor sends powerful Thunderbolt from the skies that instantly kills a random enemy within 30 yards really bosses are not killed but take significant damage this cannot affect more than once every 60 seconds oh some sort of super thunderbolt will fly out from the sky guys do crazy damage once every 60 seconds sounds interesting uh, arcane orb can now periodically spawns up to four orbiting charges that will generate an additional orb when cast all charges from the arcane orb rune now detonate at the same time Ooh. Uh, magic Missile fires 20 missiles and gains the effect of the Seeker Rune. Developers know, uh, with the Lords of Hell season, we explored what Nephilim would do if they possessed the powers of Hell. 
This season, we invite players to witness what Nephilim can accomplish with the powers of heaven. Our goal, with the 21 unique class powers, is to introduce changes to skills that can really define the way you play your a build or set. That's a good thing, because, you know, best season buffs, in my opinion, is always when it changes build diversity, and it can, makes the game what keeps saying interesting, so I like that. We're excited to see how players will harness the power of heaven in season 27. So it looks actually pretty good, guys. You know, there's a lot of things here. Wish lots of ones, you know, for us to play different types of builds. It's only really this one here at the bottom that would give us any really little change to builds at the moment. Because these two here feel more like for a support wish starter at the moment. But it's PTR, guys. Things can change, man. Things will change. But I do like the sound of that horrified, though. That sounds pretty sweet. At least for 15%. Sounds good. Sounds good. Okay, guys. So general updates. Uh, venture mode is now unlocked for all for all unlocked for all accounts now by default. That's brilliant. So, guys, you don't have to do no more campaign no more. You no longer need to complete the campaign now to access adventure modes and new players. You don't have to do the campaign no more. But if you if you haven't played D three, do it because it's actually really fun. But yeah, you can play adventure mode straight away now, which is great. Default difficulty selection has been updated for, to be consistent of all players and platforms. All players now have access to normal to torment six difficulties by default, and upon reaching level seventy with a character, players gain access to torment seven to torment sixty. Uber boss realms now automatically close after sixty seconds. Hey! <laughs> after the uber bosses have been defeated, additional portals to the same uber boss realm can now be opened in a single game session. Finally, <laughs> finally, but lovely. Oh, well, I don't, we knew this was going to happen, guys, with Echo and Nightmare, the current season buff. But we knew that it was going to be exp uh, going to be nerfed in XP. The experience, reward, the experience rewarded upon completion of Echo and Nightmare has been reduced by 83%. Oi, oi, oi. Now, as a player, that doesn't really play much meta for players for XP in, in Diablo 3. I really like this, because you can play any character, pretty much any build. And be able to grind, grind uh, you know, XP for Paragon really efficiently. So it's a bit of a shame, you know. So back to the metaphor mans, I guess. I really like this because it was just a, a different way of grinding Paragon. Shame it's been nerfed so heavily. Developers note that. Here we go. So with Echo and Nightmares transitioning from a seasonal theme to be a permanent feature moving forward, we felt it was necessary to dial back the experience rewards to avoid players feeling obliged to maximize their time spent in this activity. Fair enough. Our vision is, is for Echo Nightmares to be a fun bonus activity, like the Vault, okay? That serves a good source of loo and augment materials. That's true, actually. You do get a lot of orgs on there. We also made several changes to Adventure Mode and Difficulty Unlocks. These will align with the Diablo 3 experience across all platforms for new players, and they should make it a lot easier to jump into your preferred activity. Lastly, we improve the Uber Bosses flow so players and groups can kill multiple rounds of bosses without having to remake those games. Nice. That's a nice change, actually. Right, guys, item changes, man. Oh, please show Zuni change. Ugh. Item change, guys. Guardian's Jeopardy, two-piece bonus. Your base vitality attribute from equipped items is increased now by 50%. Guardian's Jeopardy, three-piece bonus. Your base strength, dex, and intelligent attributes from equipped items are increased by 50%. Whoa. That is nice. We heard from players that the crafted three-piece sets have had some of the most significant impacts on itemization, so we're introducing, introducing another one to add more choice. Mm -hmm. Yum, 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 yum. That's actually pretty cool. I like that. Crusader, Armor of Akon, two-piece bonus. Judgment has no cooldown and gains the effect of every rune. Armor of Akon, four-piece. Attach from Fanlex Avatars. Ooh! Reduce the cooldown of Arakan's Champion by 0 0.5 seconds. Also apply Condemn. When attacking enemies that are affected by judgment. Ooh, that sounds alright. Uh, Eternal Union increases the duration of some of the family's bowmen and bodyguard indefinitely. Nice. I don't know if that's going to be enough damage, though, to make the avatars like a viable power or anything like that. But we'll see, man. Seems on my hand. I really want to play the bowmen, man. To better put a note. Uh, our goal with the Armour of Akon rework is to narrow the focus of the set to give it a distinctive density. Highlighting the fantasy where the Crusader is the Knight Commander, passing judgment on the enemies of light. Nice. I've got a feeling that the pets probably won't do enough damage. But um, it's a nice change, because I really like the family of Bowman, man. They're really cool. <laughs> necro! Whoa, loads of Necro changes. Guys, look at this Necro stuff. Kragul's Avatar, two-piece bonus. Blood Rush and Siphon Blood gains the effect of every rune. Your life spent abilities no longer cost essence. 
Trag's four piece, uh, while at four life, your healing from skills is added to your maximum life for 45 seconds, up to 300% more. Wow. Trag's six piece, your life spent abilities deal 10,000 increased damage, and your healing from skills increased by 100%. Iron Rose change, attacking with Cypher Blood has a 100% chance to cast a free Blood Nova. Ultimately, you're losing 10% of your maximum life. Your Death Nova deals 40% increased damage for 60 seconds. And this effect can stack up to 10 times. Ooh. Funeral pick. Oh my god, did they actually make this thing useful? Siphon Blood from two additional targets. Each target takes 300% increased damage from you. This The bonus for Siphon Blood Power Shift is now 20% per stack and benefits all skills. Mm. Developers note, we wanted to recapture the Blood Necromancer's fantasy of Trickle's avatar and increase effects against single targets. Cool. Hey yeah, guys, what do you guys think about the track change there in the items? That's pretty good. Okay guys, up next is Are You Wizard Ari? Delza a Magnum Opus 2-piece bonus, Cassian Arcane Orb, Energy Twister, Magic Missile, Shot Pile, Special Blade, Let's Go Meteor or Arcane Tyrant, also cast Slow Target at some time, sorry. Also cast slow time at a target. This effect will not trigger if the target is already inside a slow or time bubble. The cooldown or teleport will reset while you're inside your bubbles generated from the set to be cast by you. Okay. Now force speed bonus guys, you take 75% reduced damage. And you have a slow time when you have slow time active, allies inside your slow time gain half of the benefit. Okay, that's pretty good. Hmm, support wizard maybe? Sounds pretty good. The Crown of Primus, uh, slow time, gains the effect of every rune and permanently follows you. It follows you? <laughs> That's cool. <laughs> I like that, man. That sounds interesting. A bit like uh, Witch Doctor BBE guys, you know, on the uh, Spirit Brush set. Interesting. Tower Rush, a two-piece. Uh, damaging enemies with Arcane, Cold Fire, Lightning will grant you immunity for that element and cause a meteor of the same type to fall from the sky. Same meteor cannot happen twice in a row. Then four piece. Arcane Cold Fire Lightning attacks each increase all your resistance by 50% for eight seconds. Smoldering Core. Lesser enemies are now lured to your Meteor's impact areas. Meteors now deal 40 to 50% increased damage because if you hits to the same target, it stacks up to 10 times. Developers note. Uh, Devils of Megan Opus has been feeling weak, clunky, and it is meeting the desired gameplay flow, so we've streamlined. The play style to make it more engaging, allowing wizards to feel like masters of time. The core of Tarrash's elements has changed over time, so we're revisiting it to reintroduce a playstyle that utilizes the Meteor. Oh, guys, what do you think about that? That's pretty good. Monk! Oh, there's no Witch Starter patch notes. Oh, come on, Blitz. What's going on? No Witch Starter notes? Come on. There's so many things need to change with, like, Zuni, man, and Jade, and... Ah! Anyway, guys, read Monk, man. In his mantra, now this this must be a nerf. In a mantra six piece, gain the passive ability of the five rune mystic allies at all times. Attacking enemies creates create your chosen mystic ally that lasts fifteen seconds up to ten mystic allies. The damage of mystic allies is increased by nine hundred percent for each mystic ally you have out. Okay. In a mantra, monks have been riding high on the waves of success for several seasons, so time to bring in the nerf shark. <laughs> the nerf shark guys has bitten in his mantra. It still still be decent though. I wouldn't worry too much about it. Yeah, guys, uh, no, no, where's, uh, where's, where's Witch Doctor? Once again, guys, Witch Doctor. <sighs> it's left out. You know, they could have changed Zuni to just have six-piece passive damage bonus. You know, Helltooth offhand damage bonus needs to go up. You know, the, um, the Trod Effigy offhand that makes bears really strong. You know, they could have made that so he does, does it for all zombie charge or just at least bump the damage up, you know. Obviously, Jade, man, is... Weak. There's no witch to patch those. That's really disappointing for me, man. Really, I'm really disappointed about that. There's so many things I've sent them, man. They're not even like a Zuni change. That really is a change, oh, man. Oh, well, no my guys. Sorry, guys. No, no witch to changes, man. Um, some bug fixes here. Captain Crimson trimmings fix the bug that caused the free piece set bonus that occasionally drop off. Ooh, that explains a few things. Damage values. Blah 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 blah. And then, guys, how to participate in the issue. And there you go, guys. That is the patch notes currently. Now, remember, all this is subject to change. What do you guys think about Season 27 buff? It's definitely uh, a bit more interesting than the last season buff, obviously. Which is actually coming into the game anyway. But though it's, the XP of that has been nerfed massively. But 
what do you guys think, man? You know, it's gonna it's gonna promote more build diversity. It's quite a few changes to the, the your sets there, apart from motion hunter. <laughs> you know what I mean? But um, yeah, overall, man, I think it's it's looking like a lot better season for day three, guys. So uh, there you go, guys. Feel free to subscribe, guys, and like this video and share it. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care, guys. Have a great evening. GG.